Does the Bank of England have a women problem? Now this is a highly important question, one that I believe I've covered before over on the Cthulhu Kin and Friends show, but apparently this particular dead horse being resurrected by Katie Hope refuses to stay down, and I think it right we address it. Let's not forget here, the only way anything can truly succeed is not because of meritocracy where the best people in the best jobs can do the best work, no no no, it's with representation because that inspires people based on arbitrary factors like gender to succeed in life. Personal choice out of the window. We must know that the glass ceiling can be shattered and women can be everywhere, which they can be. It's why we have a prime minister that is currently female. She's also a shrew and a bit of a locust, but it, you know we'll, we'll stick with female for now. The wonderful thing about articles like this from the BBC is that every time it crops up, it brings up the representation argument, as if there is any validity to it, considering the nature of the occupation. A number of the people who do write these articles typically go down the line of thought that by having a woman in that job, and there is a straw man in here, by having a woman in that job, the job will inherently be more efficient, be better, more organized. That's not always the case. And I don't think gender, race, sex, faith, play any factor, or should play any factor, when it comes to influencing monetary policy committees and setting the interest rates that we abide. We know it is meritocracy in action as opposed to representation because our chief of the Bank of England is Mark Carney, a Canadian, and if we are truly interested in helping the locals and representation of, let's say, the locals for the sake of this particular argument, perhaps we would not have imported somebody who is renowned for fixing. Th Granted, Mark Carney has many issues of his own, for example, getting involved in that horrible little referendum thing that just won't die. The Bank of England should have been impartial, to be honest. But back to the women being represented thing. Because in this picture of nine people, only Silvana, second from left at the back, if you couldn't tell, I don't want to assume the gender of everyone else, but seriously, is the only female in this picture, this is a problem. We know for a fact that when some of these particular posts were up, there weren't many females actually going for the jobs to begin with. Whether it be because of personal choice, let's face it, when you are one of those nine people, the stress must be intolerable. And I'm not now going to go down the path of saying women can't handle stress. I'm just saying there's a reason there is eight guys there, and it's not just because of elitism. I'm not denying there is some elitism, by the way. We know this. It's Old English. It's established. Let's call it a tautology for now. It is what it is. Because the old systems of people knowing people and then using that influence to get their friends hired but that is hardly a system that exists solely within banking, it's also in every other major sector anywhere in the world. Seriously. We do know though, based on what was available, that very few women went for these jobs. Does that mean though, those women should be chosen because they're women? No. Does it mean that they had a fair chance to compete against guys for the same job? Yes. Were they successful? Evidently not. Now, I do want to address the article because there are some points within it that I think are quite relevant. The nine strong committee looked pretty similar. Eight white men and one woman. I am not entirely sure, Miss Hope, why the race of the men is relevant. In fact, I would argue that is solely there to attack them based on their race. And I think that is stupid. Miss Hope, you should do better. Women make up half the UK population, yet just one ninth of the monetary policy committee. There is also not a single black, Asian or minority ethnic group member. Yeah, big whoop. What's your point? Oh, hang on. I know the point. Mer representation. It's not a valid argument. This point has virtually no credibility. It does not matter what your race is. It does not matter what your gender is. These do not matter in this particular field. And I say that from a level of ignorance, I guess. But I do also want to point out that if we're just going to employ people based on race and gender to fill quotas, in a field where risk is so high, as opposed to hiring the better people for the job, then we are setting ourselves up to fail. This is not a case of the evil white men running the banks here. They are not the problem, nor is the system that exists. You will claim that it is elitism, and there is an argument for it with some people. Of course there is, and I'm not excusing that. However, the best people for those jobs are currently in that picture, and it does not matter if they are male, female, black, Asian, a particular Asian, any kind of Asian, or white, Latina, it does not matter. It really doesn't, because we do not want to fail. 
if the bank crashes, we have people that are held accountable. If we then scrutinise those people and realise they're not as qualified as we thought they were, and they were given the job because of something like affirmative action, hmm. people are going to start questioning the validity of that, aren't they? What we want, and what anyone would want, is to know that the very best people have earned their job. If they are not earning their job, and they are being given it because of that, and then we fail, yeah, hmm. Now, I do think it's worth pointing out that, yes, I do understand how some might see others based on race as role models. But if we want to go down the path of wanting a truly equal society, we need to find a way to remove that train of thought so people are instead inspired by the actions and not the arbitrary factors. For example, gender, race, sexuality, faith, or even political leaning. These, to me, do not matter. They should not matter. When you look at somebody and you're inspired by them, if it's because you can relate because of skin, I think an argument can be made that perhaps what you're basing their inspiring you on as having a bit of a weak foundation. But I can understand and appreciate at the same time some people would, for certainly from minority groups, seeing people in positions of power that do share something like that with them as inspirational. Take Obama. He inspired many white people to run for office. One of the massive and biggest glaring problems with something like affirmative action and this whole if we have this many people in the country percentage-wise then we must represent it in all major walks in life is that it does open us up to a discrimination to meet quotas. In risky fields like banking, you want the best, not vagina just cause. Therefore, if in this picture the majority happen to have penises and identify as male, then so be it. If they are the best qualified people for that job, when they got the job that is, I'm sure there are people far better qualified now that could take the job from them, but as the job vacancy isn't open because of a snap, they keep their job. But if they're the best at the time and they didn't get it unfairly, then so be it. If they happen to be male, so be it. If they happen to be white, then I don't really see a problem with it. In fact, to those that think somehow race is a valid argument in this particular trail of thought, you're a retard. The same applies to those who think this is sexist. Mark Carney got the job as governor, was it governor of the Bank of England? I think it is, because he was the best person for the job. Did his race play a part or his gender? No, he was simply the best person at the time. Now there are, courtesy of the Public Accounts Committee, references to the fact that there are diversity targets, which in truth has me concerned because they are targets. Another argument made in the article was that Mark Carney is the 120th in a continuous line of white men to have headed the bank. So what? Even though I personally don't see anything wrong with the picture, the COO, Joanna Place, has said that in terms of diversity and inclusion, we have done a lot more than just gender and ethnicity. We have a number of staff networks. We have inclusive events. We have a well-being policy. We have done a cognitive diversity survey. We have started to look at social mobility. Fantastic. You are pandering because reasons. I don't mind doing more to encourage people to get involved in banking. I don't mind encouraging more people to get involved in any profession based on their backgrounds if they feel disadvantaged. I really don't, but I want you to be absolutely sure when you do this, you're not holding back people like, for example, white men because they're white men. I want to be sure that when you're doing this, you're not doing it to meet quotas because that is not right but you are instead doing it so that they have the best chance to compete against white people to make sure those that get the job are the best. Once you start doing these supposedly inclusive events, hitting targets, you are discriminating. That is a fact. Anyway, tonight at 9.30pm GMT over on the Cthulhu Cain and Friends show, I will be streaming a Prime Minister's Questions response. Hopefully it's the A-team, so it'll be rubbish. But please feel free to join me. Link to the Cthulhu Cain and Friends show down below. So I hope you all have a lovely Wednesday, and thank you all for listening.